Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is David Ben Gurion, born in 1886 and dies in 1973. David Ben Gurion, the first Prime Minister of the State of Israel, was born at David Green in Poland in 1886. His father, Avigdor, was an early Zionist, a follower of Theodor Herzl. And as early as 1905, Ben-Gurion joined the Pole Tzion, the left-wing and the workers' branch of the Zionist movement. Due to family circumstances, the young Ben-Gurion, or green as he then was, wasn't able to have an education past the age of 14, which cost him repeatedly as he went through life. For example, he couldn't get into technical college in Warsaw uh, when he was in his late teens, and uh, even later, when he wanted to get further qualifications when he was on a stint in Constantinople, his father had to forge a high school certificate for him in order to continue his education at a higher level. In 1906, he went to live in Palestine himself as an ardent Zionist, and there he got further involved in left-wing politics. When Ben-Gurion arrived in Palestine, he changed his name from Green to Ben-Gurion. In 1911, he was sent first to Salonika and then to Constantinople, to represent the Zionist organization. Salonika was a very important and very wealthy Jewish city, and Constantinople was the capital of the Ottoman Empire, which at that time ruled Palestine, and therefore was a very important place for political activity. In 1914-15, to Ben-Gurion was caught by the outbreak of war, and although he was in fact loyal to the Ottoman Empire and wished to fight for the Ottoman Empire at the beginning of the First World War, he was nevertheless deported and he found himself in the United States of America. His initial attempts at propaganda in America were unsuccessful, uh, but he later became very successful as a writer, and he pursued and advocated the Zionist position by writing uh, latterly in Yiddish, which was most successful amongst the Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe into America. By this point, he'd swung his support away from the Ottomans and towards the Allies, and he joined the Jewish Legion in 1918 as the hostilities of the First World War came to an end. In the interwar period, the period of the British mandate over Palestine, Ben-Gurion's attitude was one of conciliation with the British and cooperation with them to the greatest possible extent, while maintaining advocacy of Zionist objectives. Unlike those such as Jabotinsky wanted to see a more aggressive approach, Ben-Gurion wanted to work with the British as much as possible. However, this was no longer possible after 1939, when the British published their white paper, which would have severely restricted Jewish immigration into the land of Israel, into mandatory Palestine. And that's when Ben-Gurion, who was by this point the leader of not only the Zionist left, but the leader of the whole political Jewish community in the land of Israel, in Palestine, that is when Ben-Gurion advocated for a policy of armed resistance to the British. This was cut short by the outbreak of the Second World War, and in fact Ben-Gurion then supported, as we would expect, the Allied efforts against the Nazis. When that war was coming to an end, was clearly being won in 1945 to 46, the policy of resistance and armed resistance to the British was resumed and there were activities uh, against the British rule uh, towards the end of their time in the mandate. In 1947, as the leader of the Jewish agency, Ben-Gurion accepted the partition plan, which was agreed by the United Nations. And when that was rejected by the Arab nations around, he organized the military campaign, which was successful in the form of Israel's war of independence. He was the man who declared the independence of the state of Israel in 1948, and in 1949, as the head of Mapai, the left-wing political party, he became prime minister. He was prime minister twice, with a one break in the middle from 1949 to 1954, and again from 1955 to 1963. Although he was himself secular in his beliefs, he was very committed to Jewish culture, Jewish history, Jewish learning. He wanted to create a very knowledgeable and very learned community, even though he was not insistent on religious practice. He did not practice himself, although he always gave scope for the Orthodox to live according to their own principles and their own values. In his time as Prime Minister, he laid the foundations of a strong, stable and democratic state which still survives today. And in 1970, he retired to his kibbutz, and there he spent the rest of his life reading and learning and contemplating and giving advice as it was necessary. Ben-Gurion, therefore, was not just the founder of the state, he was also the one who embedded the state and made it a success for many years to come. Thanks for joining.